Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha. My name is Larry Foster, and I'm filling in for Mark Schlaub for this episode of Law Across the Sea. Today, we're going out into the Pacific Islands. My guest is Manara Mordecai, who is the Director of Special Projects at the University of Hawaii's William S. Richardson School of Law. One of her special projects is to coordinate a legal training program the law school puts on for Pacific Island judges. The trainers are lawyers and law professors and judges from Hawaii. The law school first started training programs for Pacific Island judges from the Federated States of Micronesia some 30 years ago. That earlier program was funded by the federal judiciary in the Federated States, then headed by Judge Ed King. The coordinator of that program was Addison Bowman, professor of law at the law school. At that time, most if not all of the state court judges were not law trained. The goal of that program was to bring those judges to the level of a second year law student. So, Manara, aloha. Welcome to Think Tech. Aloha, Larry. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk about this program with you today. So, uh, what, what Pacific Island jurisdictions are included in this program? So, it, the jurisdictions include American Samoa, uh, Federated States of Micronesia, which is, or includes the states of Koshrai, Yap, Chuuk, and Ponape, and um, Republic of Marshall Islands, and Palau. Those are the four jurisdictions. That's a pretty broad swath of uh, yeah, uh, it jurisdictions. Is. Yeah, it is. What kind of legal systems do those uh, uh, nations have? So um, most of, the, actually all of the jurisdictions are based on U.S. Constitution. So they have some form of Western juris, um, court system, but they also have traditional court systems as well. So um, we have a lot of judges who are actually sit on traditional court um, mm. courts. And they um, hear cases related to customs, traditions, and land cases as well. So um, you have, the judges are lay judges, as you mentioned, they're non-law trained. Um, and they have, the FSM, for example, has um, part of their constitution that um, gives authority to traditional common law. So um, they are ch elders in their communities. Some of them have been um, in, le in the legislature, um, elected officials, and now they, they've become appointed as judges. Mm -hmm. As I recall, the Chief Justice in the Federated States of Micronesia is a UH Law graduate, yes, is that correct? Yes, it is. Dennis Yamase yeah. is a 1982 graduate of Richardson Law School. Um, last time, um, our last session was actually in Ponape, and he hosted us. Um, his courtroom was in Ponape, so he hosted us at the, um, on the islands. It was um, very welcoming. We had a reception mm -hmm. um, with Sakao, which is the um, their word for ava. Um, so there's a lot did of. You, did you try the uh, sakao? The I ava? did. I did. It yeah. was quite something. We also got to see how it's made. Uh -huh. um, so there's a lot of connections between the islands yeah. that we got to see and experience. Yeah. So um, uh, where does the funding for this particular program come from? So it's actually really interesting. Um, the funding is coming from the federal government. But the, there are different sources of the funding. The, the U.S. federal government? The U.S. federal government, okay. yes, that's correct. Um, it, specifically, the Office of Insular Affairs under the Department of Interior. But mm -hmm. there are different jurisdictions receive funding from different places. So for example, Republic of Marshall Islands and FSM are part of the Compact of Free Association. So that's mm -hmm. where the funding is coming from that. And for Palau and American Samoa, there are different grants that sponsor those as well. Um, the program itself is administered, the funding and the program is administered by the Ninth Circuit Pacific Islands Committee. And actually, Judge Clifton sits on that committee as well. He's a judge, Ninth Circuit judge here, based here in Hawaii. So um, we, the law school, um, we submitted a proposal to, to become the, the body that provides the actual training of. And um, I collaborate closely with the Ninth Circuit education specialist, Russ Matheson. So we work closely together in putting together this program. Mm -hmm. Excellent. What is, what is the purpose of the program? I think I mentioned earlier the original program some 30 years ago was to sort of raise the level of these lay judges uh, to, to that roughly of a second year law student. Is it? Mm -hmm. What's the purpose of the current program? 
So as I mentioned, they have no legal training, so our goal is to provide substantive and procedural legal skills, um, such as courtroom management, decision making, and the role of customary law. Um, we also teach communication um, in being able to um, advocate for, um, not advocate, but become um, neutral arbiters uh, in, in their courtrooms and being able to communicate and explain their decision making of why the decision had come out a certain way. Um, so some of the sessions that we focus on are very practical for those mm -hmm. purposes. So this particular institute, this iteration of the institute, we're teaching courses in decision making, judicial ethics, evidence, um, criminal law, and tr uh, property rights. Excellent. How, how long is uh, uh, a program typically run? A week or a few days? Or Yeah, so the way we structure the program and our original proposal was to have um, two years of the sessions that are spread out over a two-year period. There'd be five sessions, and each session would last four or five days, about six hours each day. So it's pretty intense, and because they have to, they cannot take extensive amount of time from their work, they concentrate their training within a, a one-week period. So Monday through Friday, they're in a classroom for six hours, and um, it's one week, and we have about um, two sessions per year that mm -hmm. we try to schedule. And they take place in different locations around the Pacific? Yes, that's correct. Um, it varies. One of the reasons why we were selected, actually, for this to administer this program is because of our proximity, geographic proximity, to the island. So it makes it convenient for judges to come and um, be in Honolulu, and we also take it, take some of the sessions to the islands as well. So it it um, changes between Micronesian region. We, so our, in the past, we've had sessions in Palau, in the Marshall Islands. Uh, we also held a session in Hilo, in Ponape, and this. So why, why was Hilo? Chosen. It's an interesting location. Um, it was time for us to host it here in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and we decided to try a different island. Mm -hmm. And it was actually worked out really well. Um, the The session was on criminal law, and we, as part of the training, as I mentioned, they do a lot of practical, hands-on um, training as well that are relevant for their courtroom specifically. So we were able to use um, a courthouse in Hilo, and um, Judge Marshall, who is a federal judge based out of Los Angeles, she was visiting and she was the, the chair of the committee of the Pacific Islands Committee for the Ninth Circuit. So she was in town, she was in Hilo with us, and she was actually able to preside over this mock trial that Terrific. we conducted. Did she um, bring her robe? And <laughs> yes, we had the robe. We yeah. had. Um, yeah. This is an, this is a picture from the mock trial. You, you see the judges sitting here. Mm -hmm. um, they. It was quite exciting, actually, to see the proceedings, and um, she definitely was in full um, judicial mode. Um, and being in Hilo and knowing some of the judges who um, actually have the courtrooms there, and they were very cooperative and very helpful for us to be able to reserve a courtroom and use mm -hmm. it for a mock trial. So how were the uh, participants for the program selected? So the, they are lay judges. But um, we are looking at experience and geographic background. Um, so for example, if people who have a little prior training will get mm -hmm. preference. Mm -hmm. do, they, do they apply for this? Or? Yes. Okay. So what happens is we send out an invitation, a save the date for a particular session with an explanation what the session will teach. And then people can submit, uh, participants can submit a, um, registration form. Mm -hmm. um, the other decision part of actually is based on not on us, but on their jurisdiction. So mm -hmm. each jurisdiction has a chief justice that decides which judges would benefit the most from this particular training. Okay, so it may not be the same participants for each, each exactly, session. Exactly, exactly. But okay. for the most part, within that two year period where we have the sessions, I've seen the same judges that have been able to attend. So they're building on their previous learned skills, which mm -hmm. has been really helpful. So you, I've definitely seen the trajectory um, with particular judges. Mm -hmm. So they come from a wide variety of jurisdictions and, and cultures uh, and languages. Yes. 
Uh, so I assume the medium of instruction for the program is English. Yes. Uh, but I assume, do, do, do you know offhand, when, uh, particularly with, if they're doing customary law cases, uh, what, did, what would be the language, for example, in YAP that they would use? Do you know Yappies or? Uh, I don't know the name of the language, but they do conduct um, most of, in traditional courts, they would conduct it in the native language. Um, but almost everyone is fluent in English. There, mm -hmm. We've had some barriers with language uh, with some judges, but they haven't been, um, it's something that we adapt to as faculty and administrators as well. Mm -hmm. So there are some things that we may take for granted, some words that we take for granted or concepts that we take for granted. Um, and because our, our population in Hawaii is so unique and there's such a large population of Micronesians who are living in Hawaii, there's familiarity with different cultural norms and traditions. Um, so our faculty are able to adapt and explain certain concepts. Mm -hmm. And then what's been really beneficial actually and what I've seen grow over the period of time that I've been doing this program is how much they're learning from each other. Terrific. So, for example, in the classroom, if there's a concept that someone doesn't understand, the judge sitting next to them is able to explain to them in a native language. Mm -hmm. And my recollection, I've been out to the Pacific a couple times, but uh, you mentioned Hawaii was selected as a, as a good venue for the organization part because of its close geographic mm -hmm. proximity. But these nations are thousands of miles apart themselves. Yeah. And I think even FSM, YAP, is a thousand miles from Pohnpei or something like yeah. that. Uh, transportation must be one of your largest costs. It is, it is. Um, it, it can be a barrier, but the, prior to having, having it hosted by Richardson Law School, the judges would be sent to Reno, Nevada, which is mm. even more expensive and further travel. So if, it actually works out really well for um, our partnership with the Ninth Circuit, where when we host the sessions in the Pacific Islands, the cost with, associated with travel is actually minimal because um, it would be faculty who is flying into the islands and then we're bringing in, for example, flying from Yap to Ponape is cheaper than flying from Yap to Hawaii or to mm -hmm. Reno. Um, but it is expensive and it is a challenge, but it's something that we're dealing with and we do the best we can. Um, there is one airline that flies there, United Airlines. So yeah. we yeah, the old continental. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. it's an island hopper plane, actually. So when we flew to Ponape, you have to make three or four stops, which makes for a fun adventure. <laughs> um, but we're all on the plane together, actually. We, mm -hmm. You know, we pick up people in different <laughs> islands and then fly with them. Um, so it works out. And for right now, this is the best case scenario, I believe, because the islands. If for in the future, for example, we decide to do some of the sessions online, the bandwidth doesn't allow for it to be mm. as effective. Mm. And also, I believe in person, um, small group discussions are really valuable, which is worth that time and effort that yeah. goes into yeah, it. Yeah, those face-to-face -face small groups. Exactly. Okay, exactly. I think we're rapidly approaching the half time for oh, the program. Oh, wow, that was fast. Uh, <laughs> very fast. So let, let's, uh, when we come back, mm -hmm. uh, we'll continue talking about the program and get some of your insights as to how, how well the program is working. So, uh, see you after the break. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dave Stevens, the uh, host of Cyber Underground, uh, every Friday here at 1 p.m. on thinktechhawaii.com. And then every episode is uploaded to the Cyber Underground, that library of shows that you can see of mine on youtube.com. And uh, I hope you'll join us here every Friday. We have some topical discussions about why security matters and what could scare the absolute bejesus out of you if you just try to watch my show all the way through. Hope to see you next time on the Cyber Underground. Stay safe. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha.
Aloha. We're back from break. And uh, my guest today is Manara Mordecai, who runs a uh, very exciting program put on by the William S. Richardson School of Law right here in Manoa Valley at the William, William S. Richardson School of Law uh, training program for Pacific Island judges. Uh, so the trainers, mm -hmm. uh, can, can you talk a little bit about the trainers, or who they are and how they are selected? Definitely. So I work with the dean of the law school, Avi Soifer, um, and you know him well <laughs> as mm -hmm. your colleague. So we kind of go through the expertise, um, what specifically would be needed for a particular session and think about experts in Hawaii um, who are not only experts in that particular field, but also have familiarity with the Pacific Island jurisdictions. So for example, we were lucky to have Julian Agon, who is a graduate of yes. UH Law School, and he's a prominent attorney in Guam. He recently argued a case in front of Ninth Circuit, actually. Yeah. So, so our law school has a number of students in from the islands. Yes, is we right? do. So there's yeah. a close connection between the yeah. law school and the Pacific Islands. So Julian actually taught a session on territorial sovereignty and insular cases, mm -hmm. uh, which was very relevant in, um, to particular, like for example, for American Samoa to learn about the territorial jurisdiction and limitations. Uh, we also had Judge Clifton, um, mm -hmm. who sits on the Ninth Circuit Pacific Islands Committee, and he's a Ninth Circuit judge as well. I think he also served uh, um, as an Associate Chief Justice over some cases in American Samoa. Mm -hmm. So he has experience with yeah. that as well. Judge Clifton is also an experienced teacher. Yes. Uh, he taught at the law school for many years. Yes. Uh, as, as an adjunct professor. Yes. Uh, so yeah. it was very, um, so they. that's one of the advantages of actually holding in Hawaii to mm -hmm. have the um, to have the legal experts who are also um, have experience working in the Pacific Island jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Sherry Broder is another one. She's okay. um, a faculty at the law school and also a well-known attorney here mm -hmm. at the law uh, in Hawaii as well. As, as you probably know, she's her and her late husband, Professor John Wan Dyke, did a lot of cases related to Pacific Island jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So I think they actually even drafted some of the um, rule of law Mm. and looked at some of the cases mm. um, in the Marshall mm. Islands. I think my recollection, one of your trainers, uh, trainers is probably too low of a word Fact, to describe yeah. these, these excellent yeah. people, but uh, Judge Milks, Marie yes, Milks. Yes, Judge Milks, she's been yeah. outstanding. She taught the last session in Ponape on judicial ethics and professional responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, the participants loved her, the judges loved her so much, they asked her to come back, so she's <laughs> teaching our next session. Good here in Honolulu, which will take place in January, on decision making. So um, again, her perspective on how the, the rules in the courtroom and issuing opinions, drafting opinions, all of that, she takes it from a perspective not just taken in a vacuum, but specifically how it's related to um, having cases and hearing cases in the Pacific Island jurisdiction. So for example, with judicial ethics, um, in, in uh, some of these jurisdictions, it's impossible to recuse yourself from every case because you will know somehow someone related to um, either mm -hmm. friends or family related to people who are in front of you in the courtroom. So she discussed how to approach judicial ethics from that perspective when, where you know most of the people that are coming in front of you mm -hmm. and how do you handle it uh, professionally. Mm -hmm. yeah. One more question about trainers. Yes. Uh, I understand another popular trainer is uh, Ken Lawson yes. from the UH Law School. Yes, he yeah. is, and he's popular with the news here as well. You see him as yeah. a criminal law expert mm -hmm. here. So he taught criminal law, um, and again, he was so popular, they asked him to come back for criminal procedure. He taught twice, and uh, Ken is a good example of how not only are we building on the existing relationship between Pacific Islands and Hawaii, but also we're creating future relationships. So Ken. Um, he's never taught in the Pacific Islands before, but he's an expert in criminal law. And after he's taught that particular session, he's actually been invited back for yeah. several times. And he's a very gifted teacher as he well. He is. Yeah. He, he's been back to speak as a conferences in the Pacific Islands in Guam and other places. Mm -hmm. So he is now a regular <laughs> in the Pacific Islands. So you've been doing your, yourself organizing this program for about a year and a half now, mm -hmm. roughly. Uh, what have been the biggest obstacles to sort of organizing this uh, program with a lot of moving parts? Um, logistics have been difficult at times, mainly places to stay, um, making sure that everyone will have appropriate accommodations. Um, but for the most part, it's been going pretty smoothly. 
Um, we do also find that some, some judges have more experience than others, so being able to accommodate different levels of expertise. Mm -hmm. um, and with each session, we learn how to do it better the next time, and we've been getting amazing evaluations, and um, there's definitely a feedback that we, we get back from the judges. That, teach it, that tells us how to improve it for next times. And um, it pays off because every time we submit a new registration form for a new session, we have the classes at capacity. So our <laughs> upcoming Excellent. session in January is at capacity already. Excellent. Yeah. Hey, has there been any, well, have you been out to the Pacific, well, other than Hawaii, mm -hmm. have you been out beyond Hawaii in the Pacific uh, before, before this program? Not before this program. Okay. Um, so it, it really opened up um, opportunities for mm -hmm. me to be able to uh, learn about the cultures and mm -hmm. being able to actually visit their courtrooms mm -hmm. in, the, in the specific jurisdictions. So, um, was there anything that surprised you uh, over this last 18 months in running this program? I, you know, you mentioned that they're spread out thousands of miles. The surprising yeah. part is how com the commonalities that I've seen across different yeah. islands. Um, and as you know, the Hawaii, um, cult some of the cultural traditions here have been revived through some of the um, knowledge that was still existing in in, in Yap and other right, right, micro the great navigator exactly. Yes. Yeah. So to see, so for example, I weave I lauhala, mm -hmm. and to see some of the lauhala weavers in Ponape and Marshall Islands, and mm -hmm. to see um, to to witness that cultural connection has been very special. Um, and then to see how the judges interact with each other and learn from each other. Um, a lot of the issues they deal with, even though the, they're spread out thousands of miles, the cases are very similar, uh, whether it's land cases or customary traditional rights cases. So mm -hmm. they, they teach each other just as much as they learn from our faculty. So how do you, how do you gauge the success of a program like, like this? Do they take an examination at the end, or <laughs> uh, how does that work? Um, the success for me uh, lies in evaluations to see the feedback because a lot of that learning is voluntary. It's not forced. There's no grades mm -hmm. assigned. So um, the judges are eager and uh, willing to learn. And then to see them discuss some of the issues that they learn during lunch, during dinner, that shows to me that there's a level of engagement that um, whatever we attempted to do is, is staying there. It's sticking there. Um, so. That's how I define success. There's no examination, and then return, you know, people who return for more, I, to me, that, that says a lot as well. One of my recollections of the, of the uh, program that is, is run by Ed King and uh, Addison Bowman, uh, and this is a role that, that uh, Addie Bowman played. Uh, some of the Pacific Island uh, uh, nations like Beetle Nut, uh, yeah. and he would take the judges down to Chinatown and uh, buy betel nut mm -hmm. uh, so that they would uh, uh, not be too homesick yeah. here. Uh, I know you brought some photographs with you. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, uh, maybe we can go through some of the uh, yeah, photographs definitely. and sort of explain uh, what, what's yes. going on in the photo. Um, yes, yeah, so this is actually one of the sessions here in Honolulu. We had a private tour arranged for them in the Hamilton Library. Um, and they got to see some of the original documents, for example, um, by the first Bible that was written in Samoan, mm. and our library has it. So it was really interesting to see that for me, as, and and definitely for the judges who participated. Um, and then next next picture, this is one of the sessions that we have. Um, I I do um, enjoy having the diversity of perspective, not just simply from different jurisdictions, but also from women judges as well. Mm -hmm. So we have quite. Not not majority, but a number of women judges who come back um, to to attend these sessions. So, so let's let's talk about diversity yeah. in Pacific Island judges. Uh, any sense of the percentage of women judges versus male judges? I it, this predominantly male profession as it stands, mm. but I from what I've heard from judges um, talking about it, and they brought up it brought it up several times, and um, it's changing. There are mm. more women who are on the court. Yeah in the FSM and the other places as well. Yeah. As I recall, when I was out in the Pacific 30 years ago, I don't recall a, a, a female judge. Yeah. Uh, so progress is, is being made. Definitely, uh, definitely. Uh, out there. Let's go back to the photos. Yes. So this is actually Dean Soifer. That's at the law school during one of our certificate ceremonies. So they receive mm -hmm. a certificate of completion after attending each session. And a female judge. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Excellent. So that's, um, 
That's Professor Linda Krieger. This was in the Marshall Islands, a, another certificate ceremony that we held. And actually, um, another connection, uh, Professor Calvin uh, Pang at the law school knew Judge Nick Johnny that you see on the picture here mm -hmm. from his days as a clerk in FSM. So yes. Judge Calvin, um, I mean, Professor Calvin Pang was a clerk in FSM, and he knew Judge Johnny from back then. Excellent. I know. Excellent. Yeah. So this was at the law library here in, at UH Manoa. We, we actually host a reception for them every year that they come to Hawaii. And this year, we will host one, host one at the law library as well. And I'm really excited about what we're going to do this year. We, um, the law library will bring out some of the papers by John Van Dyke and other um, original documents. And we wanted to record and have an oral history of how the constitution of some of the jurisdictions has evolved in the, the original construction of constitution, how it is, remains relevant now. Mm -hmm. So we run out of photos. Oh, OK. So, so let, me ask, let me ask you another, uh, uh, another question. Uh, do you, when you call a presenter mm -hmm. to please come and be a presenter, a trainer, yes. uh, uh, are people happy to do it, bothered, bothered to do it? Uh, they love it, um, especially the, the ones who have taught already. So mm -hmm. for example, Ken Lawson, he's taught criminal law and was happy to come back to teach criminal procedure. Judge Milks, the same way. Um, I think there's just um, something special about the bond that you create over that five-day period, um, because they're not just students. They're, um, they're practitioners. They're elders in their communities. So I feel like the faculty, our faculty, learn from them as well. Um, and they learn to become better teachers as well. So um, our presenters, so, um, we had, who was it? Um, Dean Soifer actually did a session on constitutional law, and um, he was able to learn from them in how the Constitution here in the United mm -hmm. States has, has been adapted mm -hmm. into the various jurisdictions. So we're running out of time okay. very quickly. Uh, I still have another page of questions. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have to do this again sometime. Definitely. Soon. I'd love but to. Thank you very much for joining thank us today. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, good luck on the future of the program. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Aloha. Aloha.